This is the Meet the Team podcast. I'm Brady Jolly. I'm here with my friend Danny Goins, uh, HVAC Comfort Advisor. Uh, and we're just going to get to know him a little bit today. So thanks for being with us, Danny. Um, Appreciate it. Man, just start by telling us about yourself, um, what you like to do for fun, where you live, all that sort sure, of stuff. Sure, sure. I grew up here in northern Kentucky. Uh, went to Newport High School. Uh, briefly went to NKU. Um, as far as outside of work, you know, real outdoorsy. You know, rock climbing, skiing, fishing, anything I can do to be outside. That's, that's rock right. climbing? I didn't know that. Yes, sir. Rock climbing. Not not so much anymore, but there was a period in my life where that's all I did was cool. rock climbing. Give us your be- best fishing story. Ooh, best fishing story. Uh, I had a buddy once uh, get us lost on a river in some kayaks, and we ended up out there for about 15 hours. Whoa. Yeah, that's probably it. Okay, nice. Yeah. I got to learn more about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, it was a good time. So uh, you say, like, you went to college for a little bit and everything. Yeah. Like, what was your journey like to get into the trades and to get into these Yeah, college? it's interesting. You know, out of high school, I thought originally I wanted to go to trade school, but, you know, I had somebody convince me that college was the better route. And maybe they were right, maybe not. I was a good student. However, as I progressed paying for school, I was starting to make more and more money and then got an offer to get into the business of what I was going to college for anyway, which is construction management. So I went that route. It was like, well, why even continue this, right? Found out quickly it probably wasn't for me and then ended up in the home trade industry, which was, you know, a blessing in disguise. I had no clue what I was doing at the time, but... It has brought me everything that I've had. So it's awesome, man. That's cool. Um, yeah, and I know you've had a lot of success in the trades. Like, I just want to hear about your story. Like, I know you started in uh, sewers and progressed yeah. through to HVAC. So tell us from your last company to here and how yeah. that whole progression went. So I got hired originally to deal with excavation, sewer replacement, waterline replacement. Um, was pretty good at that. Learned a lot about that side of the world and then parlayed that into the HVAC comfort advisor, you know, designing HVAC system side of things, which for me really, really recharged me. And it was my calling and I knew immediately, like, this is what I'm going to do. Awesome. Uh, and I can't see myself doing anything else, you know. That's awesome, man. I love it. So um, how long have you been here at Jolly? Been here at Jolly, I guess, October, September of 22. Uh, so about a year, year and, a and a half, roughly, yeah. Cool. And, man, you've been on an absolute rocket ship since you got here. Yeah, man. It's um, So Danny's our only comfort advisor, so any HVAC sales lead goes to him, and he absolutely knocks it out of the park. Yeah. I think one of the things that you do as good as anybody I've ever seen in the business is connecting with the customer and giving them a solution that's yeah. good for them and yeah. finding that solution. Yeah. Um, just talk about that. Like, how have you perfected your craft, and how have you improved it over the years? You know, my grandpa growing up, he used to always say, hey, you know, learn the gift of gab. Just talk to people. And genuinely, that's all I really do. It's not super complicated. Get to know them a little bit. Get to know their family. Um, and that's kind of the best part of the job is I've met all these awesome people. I've been to cookouts and parties with customers and just really meeting them. So, you know, how I do it is just keep the conversation going. I, you know, don't hack. Just be genuine. Um learn about them it's all you have to do and and it's been the best experience in the world it really has uh, i mean i can tell you stories of millions of customers that you know i would just go to absolute war for yep. um, you know do you have any um crazy or interesting customer stories that come to mind <laughs> i have a few i mean you know there's there's this one time a guy had I'm not sure if you know what a capybara is, but the world's largest rodent in South America. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they're they're pretty well known around the internet. You know, they're very friendly. They call them like the world's chillest animal. Okay, I think I've but seen he that. had a dozen of them in his home, and when you walk into that, you're like, what? And then I go in his backyard to find he has three miniature horses, and this is in a suburb. I won't say I. <laughs> It was in Blue Ash, we'll just say that. Oh. It wasn't in the county, it wasn't, you know, in a rural area. It was this was in the thick of a neighborhood. Whoa. And the only thing I could think is, man, his neighbors probably hate him yeah, so much. <laughs> but um, you know, outside of that, I've seen so many different things. You know, we've helped so many different people. Um one comes to mind, a good friend of mine that I used to work with, you know, we had a guy go into cardiac arrest when we were at his house. He he administered CPR and we did save him wow yeah 
Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, that really happened. And uh, so right there was a customer right there. We were right there, and he, my buddy, just he was just boom CPR, and oh my god, we resuscitated. Thank God. Well, he, without me, he resuscitated. Thank God he knew new CPR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that's unbelievable. Yeah, it was. It was like what just happened. Talk about added value. Yeah, yeah, I know, oh, right? Geez. Like, hey, Jeez. we'll fix whatever you need, and we'll give you CPR if you need to. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. So that those are those those two kind of stand out to me the most. It's like one's funny, one's serious, but you know, yeah, important. What's uh, what's your favorite part about the business? Just helping people genuinely. There's uh, in contracting, and I think customers at home or employees here. Everybody knows if you've hired some. There's some very sketchy contractors out there so when you get to do it the right way it feels good and that's just my favorite part is helping uh there's been instances where you've you know i've brought situations to you uh, i don't know if you remember it was like two months into working here and i had a single mother i think three kids and you know she was doing everything she could in life but she just she her furnace i believe it had caught on fire and she just couldn't she couldn't afford it you know we have financing available for whatever her circumstances couldn't do that and two months into here i walk into your office and i'm like i don't want to really know you brady at the time you know i'm like hey we we got to do something and you're like tell me about it and i'm like and here's the situation as i just explained he said all right we'll, we'll get it done and it was for me it was like all right that's that's what we're here for there's so many conglomerates and bad contractors around. And so when you work for one that does it the right way, it really, that's really, it cool. really transcends just making money and trying to get to retirement. You feel like you're actually making an impact out there. Yeah. Um, that's super cool. And I mean, I've seen that from you over and over again, where like, you know, you just deeply care about our customers and yeah, that's what it's all it's, about. It's, it's, it's really it. You know, it kills me to see some people that, you know, if they need help, we help them. Yep. That's what, we do. That's awesome. So um, talk about, like, in your year and a half working here, what are some of your favorite things about working at Jolly? People, number one. Uh, it's rare to find a company, I think, especially of our size. We're not a huge company. We're not small, but to find so many cool people. I see young, enthusiastic guys like Ronnie, you know, <laughs> run around here, like these hungry kids that want to do nothing but the right thing, and, you know, they want to work hard and kind of restores your faith. Um, love the basketball court. Although it doesn't love me because I tore an Achilles in December, <laughs> um, but but the people, the events, you know, the the Christmas party. I remember that. You know, a few months in my first Christmas party, and I wish people at home could just be a fly on the wall for that and see what we really do here and what the culture really is. Um, I think a lot of companies use that term culture a lot, like as a yeah. hot word. And, and, well, I don't think they really understand what it means and. Any anybody that walks in here for an hour will say, "Oh, I get it." Yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah. All right, so I want you to nerd out a little bit <laughs> HVAC wise. So okay. um, let's just talk about like some cool things that you're selling, like some of the ancillary products. Sure. You know, we do IAQ, sure. humidifiers, all that sort of stuff. Like, just talk about a lot of the products that your customers are liking. What I deal with mainly is heating and cooling side. You know, air conditioners, heat pumps, furnaces. Um, you know. Up until the last decade, it's been pretty straightforward, right? You had your low efficiency for, for, for forced air for a while, then your high efficiency, which has been relevant until this day, and then now we're getting into products like inverters. Um, an inverter is basically an air conditioner. It just does the same thing, but it can, can control the current that goes into the compressor, so effectively it can change its size. Become super efficient. They're super quiet. I always make the joke, you could have dinner on it and not even know it's running. And I, I say that every time because it's true. Um, so these products, to me, it, it's, you know, it's like, where do we even go from here? And that excites me. You know, it's like, you know, the horse and buggy never saw the car coming. You know, that's like kind of the old saying. It's like, yep. so to me, we're at a pinnacle, but how can it get better? Uh, on top of that, the IAQ products, UV lights, that's a big one with COVID started. You know, and uh, so that's become a very, very big product for us, you know, and they're relatively inexpensive. That's the other thing, the beauty of it. You know, they're not that expensive and the impact is tremendous. It's it's just a no brainer. Yep. Um, so talk about that fit system, the inverter you're talking about. Yeah, the about. inverter is, is to me the coolest thing in the world. Um, you know, as far as efficiency wise, you're not going to get better. 
Uh, as far as comfort, you're not going to get better. A traditional air conditioner can't pull humidity out of, out of the air. And you know, summer's here, super humid. We know that. It's sticky. It's nasty. So when your air conditioner, inverter in this situation, can remove some of that humidity from your house, you know, 70 degrees with 60%, 70% relative humidity is not comfortable. 70 degrees with 30% vary. It's a, it's a big change. And, and I think the inverters, you know, three years ago, maybe one out of 10 jobs would be an inverter. Right now, we're probably doing six out of seven. And I think in five to 10 years, that's all we're going to do with regulations of the government, you know, efficiency standards rising, which sure. for good cause, I get it. Totally understand. Plus tax incentive. There's so much that goes into it. So over the last year, we've seen this huge swing where that's the norm. And that's what people were taking advantage of. The cost can be a little bit more up front, but on the back end, there's so much more benefits. It outweighs it so much. Love it, man. It's, it's awesome. the only way to go. It's just the only way to go. Yeah, and that's one of the things that you've really like changed here is, you know, we've been able to educate our customers on yes. those inverters and different systems that in the past we weren't so much. It's been, it's been really cool. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a cool progression to see, you know, I, was, I, yep. I remember the first time I heard of an inverter six, seven years ago and I'm like, yeah okay yep. you know how could it beat this thing and that's what i was saying earlier it's like well what's next yeah i love it man so you're um one of the things i love about you is you're always a cheerleader for all your, for the team for the hvac team <laughs> right. and you're pumping them up you're talking to them throughout the day just talk about your team man talk about the team that w you work with every day it's amazing truly it really is um again as a smaller company and the hvac side of jolly is even smaller right you know we're We've been around for a few years now in the HVAC world, and we, if you combine all of our years of experience, it's, 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 it's a lot. But we have an installer specifically I always I go to first, Jake, Jake Whaley. He is the Michael Jordan of installers, and it's crazy that we have him because you would, you would expect some giant company to come try to poach him or something, and he, doesn't, he, he wants to be here. He shows up every day. He doesn't call in. Uh, on the tech side, you know, Mercedes, she's always there with a smile on her face. You see her on every commercial we have. <laughs> you know, Jeremy, you know, I had an instance with Jeremy recently. We had an issue, a troubleshooting issue with the system. And sometimes you can get some, some feedback from these manufacturers when you call for technical help or to put in a warranty claim. And he ran circles around the guy that was supposed to be like, you know, their technical guy so bad that the guy had to get off the phone to find somebody to cool. get on. So he's, he's that good. It's awesome. Um, yeah, man, it's, it's been a really cool team and our boss. I can't, before we go, Russell, man, the gnome that you can't find. <laughs> it's like a ninja, but he's the best man. I don't know how he juggles at all. I really, I don't, I couldn't do his job. Can't speak. He's the man. Can't speak highly enough. Yeah, I think that like it's uh it's unique the position that we're in. We have a lot of really good old HVAC companies around here. Yeah. We're newer, sure, you know, getting into yeah. the space and that side of the business. But I do think it allows us to be nimble and allows us to yeah. like uh, to really like have a competitive advantage. Like yeah. talk about what you talk to your customers about because a lot of times your customers have two or three bids, and sure. one of your jobs is convincing them that hey, Jolly's the best option. What yeah. do you convince them on, or what do you talk to them about, like just to prove that hey, we are the best option? Well, the number one thing I talk about is uh, location mainly. I mean, especially here in Northern Kentucky. I mean, we're we're right here in Wilder right now. I mean, you can people walk a little. We have customers that walk in all the time. And I tell him, come on down. You, you want to see Brady? He's the first person you're going to see when you walk in. Um, but, you know, outside of that, you know, and you know this, pre, right at the beginning of COVID and pre-COVID, a lot of these, the names in, in our industry, in our area, they sold out to private equity firms. And some of them may have been scared of COVID. I don't know. Maybe it was just time to cash out. But there's very few smaller local, well, not smaller, but family-owned, truly family-owned companies left. And that's what I want when I buy. You know, I want to know, like, hey, that guy, that's that's my guy. I know where he lives. I know his family. I know his story. You know, I know when I call him, he's going to tell me the truth, whether I like it or not. You know, and that's that's what I look for. It's, and that's, that's awesome. what I strive to be when I go to somebody's house. Hey, I'm your neighbor. I'm here to help, whatever that means to you. 
That's really cool. We, that's what we base it off of. Yeah, talk about that too. Like our, um, you know, we're kind of the anti PE. Like you know, we want to do yeah. this thing without the PE groups, yeah, right? Me too. Um, and what's that mean to you as an employee? And like, what do you think that that means for us as a company? Well, as an employee, so pre me working for Jolly, I worked for another company. I'm, I'm not going to mention names, but it's probably the largest home service company in Cincinnati, and I had a the owner, which I still respect and greatly, and but I bought into the whole thing, you know, and, and then one day, I mean, no rumors, no nothing, in a company meeting walks in and just says, I sold the company, you know, nothing will, nothing will change, and that was it. And I found it interesting because that day he walked in in flip-flops, and I thought that was weird. I seen it before the meeting, but... And I seen what what happened to that company and that culture because at the time the culture was good and people were family. Um, there was a lady who worked the the front desk for thirty four years. She's the mother of a famous UC football player. We'll just put it that way. She was the best. I mean, even she she left. Wow. And you just seen it crumble. And it's like you you can't and you, they'll never be able to get it back. You yeah. can't because it's being run by a bunch of people who in a different state who don't care it's a it's an investment to them and that's all that matters yep. whereas on our end like we have to own it we have to live next to you like specifically you like your name's on the side of the van yep. you know we, we can't let you down and i think you have a bunch of employees that take that serious so really cool man I, it's really cool really do. and like i said i can tell that you know you uh you live that every day man and i, I can't tell you enough how how thankful i am i appreciate for you doing that and i you, really do keeping us having a great reputation um you know in our industry you touched on it a little bit but the mechanic mentality like you know com there's companies that have bad reputations you know there's that, a lot of them um you know it's just all about the sale and it's not about the customer Talk about what's different about us and about you and, like, how you go about that. We talk about do the right thing without compromise. Yeah. How do you do that? Do the right thing without compromise is as simple as that. If you think for one minute or any thought in your head, I don't know if this is right, that's right there. You should stop yep. and say, okay, how or why and identify the problem. That's kind of identify, – identify why you think it might not be the right thing we're doing. Um, you know – I've had customers, again, I touched on where most people, oh, you can't afford it. Oh, you can't. Well, sorry about your luck. And they're out the door. And it's that just doesn't, it doesn't happen here. Like, we're going to, we'll, we'll find a way to help people that truly need the help. I mean, there's situations we get put into daily that are, you know, we can't help. But if you're a legitimate person with a legitimate problem, we're going to help one way or the other. It's just, I've seen it time and time and time again. I've done things out of, you know, just on my own out there that you enable us to do that it's empowering when it's just like, hey, do the right thing. I don't need to call and say, hey, unless it's something really crazy. <laughs> but um, and I think companies don't empower their employees. I think they give them strict regiments. And sure. when you do that, you, you, you lose all identity. You're just a robot. And it's cool. That's not the way it is here. You know, it's cool, man. Um, talk about Daikin, you know, our, our line that we sell. Daikin's Why awesome. do you love it? I like Daikin, uh, specifically the fit, the modularity of it, the ease of access. If there's a problem, for one, the warranties are good, but if there's a problem, we can remotely patch in with permission from a customer. So it's not something where we're just monitoring your, your equipment. Um, you know, so the privacy is still there, but Dyke in with stainless steel heat exchangers. Customer support's fantastic. Uh, we work with a fantastic supplier. I mean, all around, uh, equipment shortages have never been there, which during the past three or four years, anybody in this industry knows that was a really tough point of contention for a while was just getting equipment. And we've never had a problem with that. Um, to me, it makes the most sense. Uh, there's been companies with... I mean, you can, I'm not going to call anybody out specifically, but that have won class action lawsuits on problems they absolutely should not have won. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's just unacceptable. Like, you know, and yeah. Dykin, it just gets it done. It's, you know, I, I compare it to like Lexus. It's just, you know, it has the 
creature comforts, it's quality, you know it's going to run. Yep. Uh, it's under the Goodman umbrella, but it's their nicer end. So if a Goodman was a Toyota, you know, Daikin is the Lexus. It's reliable. It's it's so reliable. We have minimal warranty concerns, minimal callbacks, which on the company side, selfishly, that's important to us, right? Because sure. that's a liability and that costs money, right? So when we have a good installer like Jake, pair that with good equipment like Daikin, it's a home run every time. And we can focus on moving forward as opposed to cleaning up the mess behind us and yeah, it's been nothing but that. So yeah, it's been great. It's been awesome. Cool. So, um, any other stories or anything else? Any th- unique houses, unique experiences that you had? I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I I was in. I believe it's been a while. The oldest home in Cincinnati. Really? Yeah. On it was down in Columbia, Tuscum on Eastern. How it? old was it? It was after seventeen hundreds. I remember that it had servants' quarters in the basement. It was, it was incredible you had to put a furnace in there uh this was back this is when i had first got in the business years ago so i was actually looking it was a sewer trip uh, looking at underground wow and it terrified me because it's a historic home and you know yeah. you mess something up you're in trouble yeah um but outside of that you know on the hvac side things that stand out we did um, a project last summer you recall um i know these folks know our I guess we'll call them our producers, uh, Sebastian and Maggie. Uh, but Commonwealth uh, Comedy Club, yeah. it's a really cool spot. They converted this church into like a comedy club, and we did a three-system job last summer on, and it was one of the coolest things I'd ever been a part of because I'd never done a church. Cool. And um, that was a really interesting deal and really, really complex. It's cool. And those are the things that are fun, right? I yeah. can look at a standard furnace in my sleep and do it but when i walk into that i'm like oh boy yep. <laughs> it's like uh, well you really cool. got your work cut out so uh, so you don't do a lot in crawl spaces but you do some stuff in attics and i know you've yeah. been in some crawl spaces all yeah. of us in the trades have so i think like pretty much everybody in the trades when they're in a crawl space or an attic there's yeah. critters that they're hoping to not see yeah. so for you what is that particular critter what, what what have some answers been? So well, of let's course we get funny. the normal spiders and and snakes, All and right. then uh, uh, Austin had a skunk. Okay, that's a good one. Yep, I'll go with something completely obscure. I'll go with homeless person. Oh gosh, <laughs> I hope you ever had that happen. I have not, but but you you know you always see on the news like homeless guys been living in this person's attic for ten years. It's that's- like. Funny for me to know that so when I'll, you're crawling around a, when obscure. you're when you're crawling around a crawl space, you're worried about the homeless people. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, worried hey, about the doing? spiders. I'm like, yeah, like, I hate when you walk <laughs> through a cobweb though. There's just nothing uh, worse. And then you feel and, like and it's on you. yeah, it's just it's on you for the rest of the day. Yeah. You, you can't get it off, and it's terrible. No, I've seen you know birds, squirrels, owls, whatever you can imagine, but yep, you just kind of well, hey man, um, you're one of my favorite dudes here. Like you just absolutely crush it. You bring the energy, you bring the positivity, like can't thank you enough, man. I hope we get to work together for a really, really long time. I'm not going anywhere. Um, as you know, anything I can ever do for you, man, I'm here and, um, just can't thank you enough for everything you do. I appreciate it, Brady. It means a lot, man. It really does. Yeah. Thanks, man. It's awesome.